Oh, hey, welcome to the Awesome Cast. This episode, we're going to talk to Norm Gilsman about everything going on with PodCamp Pittsburgh. A lot of Apple iPads, big ones, little ones, some as big as your head, and so much more. This is the Awesome Cast. I'm getting awesome! Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast. I'm Mike Sorg. We're in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA, and we're ready to talk tech. With me behind the board is Chachi Says. At Chachi Says on the Twitters. Hi. Hi. How you doing? I, I well, as I discussed with you beforehand, uh, I'm on a mission to re- to tweet at least one ridiculous thing per day. Okay, you uh, at least retweeted one ridiculous thing today. Well, yeah. Well, it was the truth. I had to. It was it, it, the the tweet said uh, retweet this if you haven't smoked crystal meth today. I also retweeted it, and I haven't smoked crystal meth today, so I had to retweet it, or else I would be a liar on the internet, and I don't want to be the only one. Nope, not the only one. Although, <laughs> I have no follow-up for that. Uh, also with don't. us on the internet is Norm Hulesman of iTwixy. He's smoking crystal meth. Smoking oh, crystal sorry, meth. Sorry, let me that put this funny. away real quick. <laughs> How you doing, Norm? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Excellent, excellent. How is your crystal meth? Uh, it's kind of like uh, Power Thirst. Or huh. Power Surge, whatever that is. Uh, power the Huh. Power thirst. It's like crystal meth in a can. In a can. Sorry, I gotta <laughs> get plugged in here. Perfect. Uh, I took. He's doing great, and uh, but uh, we're here to talk about more than I took. tonight. I do believe so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks for having me on again. No problem. Again, the awesome cast. You can find us right over at awesomecast.com. Well, there's some remnants there. That that's still. It, hey, Norm, we're gonna have to talk about WordPress at some point here after PodCamp, so I can fix that. Um. I love WordPress. I know you're a huge fan of WordPress. Um, but you, otherwise, hey, we are over, the episodes are also, also over at SorgatronMedia.com if you have any problem with that. Or you can drop us emails at contact at AwesomeCast.com. Tweet us at AwesomeCast. We're on Facebook. We're on Google+. So please social media with us. Um, and also, uh, you can drop into the live chat room every Tuesday. We start about 7 p.m. Eastern time at live.SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, we got a bunch of people in there we got aaron we got bobby fj town chilla wrestling revolution john uh and and brother matt hello brother matt hi hi he doesn't he doesn't speak no. so it's kind of like a fryer so calling a brother matt kind of works is it a fryer that are usually quiet no monks monks yeah he's like a monk without that weird shaven thing in the middle of his head Although, I don't know. I haven't seen him for like a month. So. I'm, I'm going to correct you. No, what? Like that awesome shaven thing in the middle of like the Like that head. awesome shaven thing. Yes. And and they never want to wear a hat. <laughs> so let's get right into it. Norm, it's PodCamp week. Happy PodCamp week, everybody. This is I'm so pumped. Um, seventh PodCamp. Everything's coming together as the final days before the event. Tend to do just I spent all day today. I didn't work on anything else. I just worked on PodCamp. So I'm so amped. So more time on Facebook than I care to admit <laughs> talking about PodCamp. But um uh yeah, I'm really excited. So we have an awesome schedule. It's almost completely filled. And um I I'm just really I know that this year um you know we've refocused ourselves in you know building your digital toolbox and everybody's been on board with that. And um you know I think everybody's anybody who attends um is gonna just really really get a lot out of the whole weekend and um i'm i wish i could attend like half of the sessions personally so um i'm i'm obviously really excited about it well that's exactly why we're oh i i've been on the side of uh trying to get everything making sure everything's videotaped backed up so you can attend everything virtually norm uh so hopefully that all works out there kind of a new process we're doing this week this year uh but it should be great it should be great i now i i have i honestly because i've been so busy with everything going on i I am I am not really down on what the breadth of all the sessions are, except for the ones I signed up for. Um, what 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 do we have going on here? What are some highlights? Yeah, let me just. Uh, well, okay. So first of all, uh, this was confirmed late last night, early this morning. I don't know where, somewhere in between. Pittsburgh Dad is going to be our keynote speaker, so we're really excited. We try to been trying to get um, 
those two guys on board for a couple of weeks and apparently they've just been really busy as everyone is busy this year and uh, they finally got back and said we'd love to be there uh so they're going to present and um so yeah come learn about how they got started with just an iphone video and um posted to youtube and now they are you know kind of internet celebrities in pittsburgh and uh you know obviously they're doing stuff with the steelers and Heinz warden this really cool projects in pittsburgh um so that's the keynote so get there 9 a.m if you want to see them um uh, they're going to just kick the day off, um, you know, right. Uh, uh, there's a couple of really great things in the first uh, at 10 o'clock, but one that kind of came in late uh, that I'm excited about is our only mobile session uh, uh, with Christopher Evans. He runs a company called TrueFit, and he's going to talk about, you know, how mobile is really driving things and, you know, what he's, he sees and um, – uh, in terms of you know where, where trends are going and why it's so important to to have a mobile presence to to and, and to be thinking that way as a company, um, let's see. I'm kind of scanning the schedule. There's a, there's a bunch of podcasting sessions uh, this year. So if you really want to you know get your feet wet with podcasting, I think we have a really good smattering. Um, if you just want to follow a podcasting track and really get your hands dirty yeah, and this- learn, and, and and I know Mike, you're a part of that that some of those sessions too. Yeah, this is uh this I'm looking at and I'm seeing names that I, I typically don't see on podcasting uh around podcamp uh and a lot of kind of different concepts there's like a, you know i've started podcasting now now what with uh nick and neil from audio shocker uh, it was i i've seen audio shocker around uh a few times no not that kind of shocker josh um and also th- this My i'm actually bad, really you. interested how do audio podcasts 100 percent from an ipad Perfect. I, mean, I know people that like make songs. Like uh, I think uh, 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 Merlin Mann over on on Five by Five. I think the, they did a commercial uh, for Mailchimp that was completely produced in GarageBand on there. So of course you can do a podcast a podcast from an iPad. Uh, and so Rob Rob is uh, he works for Libsyn, and I, you know I think I've met him before, and I can't remember. So Rob, if, I, if you're watching this, I don't remember if we met, but he um, is podcast four one one on Twitter and has the podcast four one one podcast. Okay, so they they definitely know what he's talking about, and he actually keynoted PodCamp uh, New Kentucky or something like that. Uh, uh, one of those pod camps uh, a couple of weeks ago or last month. So nice. um, he's definitely, you know, on the radar. Um, so we're good at, uh, glad to have him with us. So, so yeah. And then, you know, one of the things we try to do is, you know, we had a lot of sessions come in and we, and as we were sorting through them, I really think we have a good, um, uh, you know, view for, for all of the different social media angles. Like, you know, we have a couple of Facebook sessions, um, how to, uh, you know, leverage social media with through statistics or, you know, other strategy related activities, you know, media crisis management. Uh, I, I don't know if we have a dedicated Twitter, um, uh, session. I can't remember if the time, maybe on, I think there might be one on Sunday, but, you know, just using Twitter isn't, you know, really where I think we need to teach people. It's, you know, how do you strategically use social media as part of your whole communications plan? So, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's what is going to be really great in terms of, you know, bringing everything together. And then, um, at three o'clock on Saturday, we're going to re- you know, revisit our, from an evening with PodCamp. We did the, uh, uh, media, uh, social media and the media. And, and we had a panel, um, of uh i should just look it up kim loins from the post gazette uh is, is gonna lead this panel and uh so we have um we don't even have the list of who's gonna be there on the website i'll have to get that but um i think it's uh the what's the weather guy uh harbaugh yeah is scott that, harbaugh is, is this gonna be the same panel that was at uh the post gazette I think so. Mila is going to be there. Okay. Uh, um, I, and this is and this is a, a video that is it's up on pod, uh, podcast dot com if you want to check it out. I, uh, there's a couple panels on there. There's that and the one that I uh, 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 Sean Graham and Deanna did uh, out at the uh, I don't know I forget what it's called the Mister Holy's the uh, crazy Alaskan grill with the stuffed bears. Um, that was interesting. Uh, so so you can kind of get a preview of the kind of discussions that are going to happen here. So, yeah. and uh, you weren't quiet. What's that? Oh, sorry, I thought I was tossing the norm there. No, <laughs> nope. just, yeah, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, that, that was He's a poor, agree. it was silent agree. That was a poor toss. Um, it was a poor toss. Well, uh, all right, all right, let me play devil's advocate a little bit here. Okay, all right. Uh, now you both know that I fully support PodCamp. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I have. Um, but there's been a lot of talk that, uh, and you had mentioned that you were redirecting uh, the direction in which PodCamp is being aimed this year as opposed to other years. Yeah. Why? So from year to year, we we noticed that, well, let me, let me go, let's time walk for a minute, right? I could throw out a magic card reference. Uh, <laughs> when PodCamp first started in 2006, we, you guys know this, you guys were there at the beginning. Um, it right. was the podcasters and bloggers in Pittsburgh getting to know each other for the first time. It was like, oh, hey, I think I heard of you before. And, oh, yeah, I guess we're the guys who do the wrestling show. And we've got this other thing called Stoke Monkey. Have you seen it? And it was just all of our fun little hobbies that we had. And people who were podcasting and blogging about them got together and just met each other, talked about best practices and um, you know, whatever you know, whatever they had going on. That was the first couple of years of PodCamp. Uh, over time, you know, as you know, Twitter, Facebook came onto the scene, you know, PodCamp One was pre-Twitter, and um, the past couple of years we've had more and more people attending PodCamp who are, you know, the small business owner or the person who is their in-house, um, you know, communications manager who the boss said, "I need you to get us on the Google so we can rank on the first page." You know, people coming to us with those types of needs, and um, as you know, as the as the hobbyist, uh, you know, still a relevant and important person, just getting to know each other and meeting each other isn't the need of PodCamp. It's, you know, we have, we're, most of our audience is people who were coming there to, they really needed to learn about, you know, what, how do we take um, Twitter and social media and apply to our business and, or apply it, you know, what, what are all these tools out here? How do we use them to communicate our message better? So, um, you know, we found that that was kind of number one for me. Um, number two, you know, other pod camps in the country are kind of recognizing this and, and, and having the same shift too. So there was no pod camp Boston this year, which was the first pod camp. There was no pod camp Philly. There's no pod camp BC. They all congealed into one they call it pod camp east so uh, with this uh, with the focus they focus on entrepreneurs specifically um for us you know i don't think that we are have that community yet um you know maybe at one point we would but uh for this year building your digital toolbox is our vision we spent a lot of time talking about that um at the beginning of our planning this year and you know kind of coming into what was our right vision for for what was the right theme for this year and we arrived at that because that's what you know it comes down to I, I kicked it back at chachi i said um so i <laughs> that wasn't really devil's advocate question that was just a question so is well, there a devil here or what no what i we... was just uh, uh i the reason i brought it up is because of uh uh, people on Twitter, a few, not that many, mind you, uh, were bringing up the fact that it didn't seem uh, oriented towards like the personal user anymore, and it was more business oriented. Well, I think so. I was just curious as to uh, why you would aim for that direction instead of the group that had been previous. So, well, I, I think also an answer to that, looking at the schedule, uh, is a little bit of this growing up. This isn't just a bunch of people hobbying around with this stuff. This is a business thing. The businesses are coming around to it, and that's why you see stuff like ROI of podcasting. You know, that's something. It, it's not enough to say, "Hey, let's go Twitter, and go do Twitter, and talk to people, and et cetera, et cetera." You have to. Uh, so many people are actually using this for reasons other than just communicating and, and BSing with each other. Um, so they need to justify it to their boss. And that's a really, really hard thing to do if you don't have a boss that really believes in it. Um, or or to be better at, at getting your message out or anything like that. I mean, nonprofits is a bit, are a big thing since they can't they don't have any budget to to put themselves out there. This is how they can do it for really cheap. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I don't I don't want to take away anything from a person who needs to learn how to get on Twitter or, or take advantage of what's changed on Facebook in the past 12 months. But, um, you know, personally, for me, it was it was a question of um, what are what are we doing? What are we really doing with this event? And I kind of did a little bit of soul searching, you know, when our off season and, and really thought about what it what is this event and why we're spending so much time in, in this and. Um, if you if you are a personal person or, or if you're an individual who who just wants to learn about what are the latest social media tools, come. You're going to get that. You're going to get a lot of that. We're just going to our conversations are going to be built around how do I communicate my message most appropriately. We're also you know you're going to if you have a Twitter question or a, you know, or something that you feel is just an individual question, 
that's why you know that's why we're gonna have a couple of icebreaker uh, we have the icebreaker party on friday at roland's in the strip and then we have our you know party at, on saturday night and and in be- and any time in between any of the sessions you're going to be able to ask any question you have of any social media expert and get answers to your question so um you know Podcamp has always been primarily a networking event. Um, and, you know, here's the other thing. If, if we find out that this year's strategy f- for building your digital toolbox was too far away from, you know, personal users, then we'll adjust. We'll stay flexible as an event and, you know, tweak it for the for the next year. But, you know, I have a feeling like we're on the right track. A lot of really positive support uh, um, and comments about this direction and, um, and a lot of really good feedback. And if anybody has any questions or comments for me, I'm always open to talk about it and, you know, Open Twitter policy, I guess I, I could say. <laughs> you know, my my answer for everyone uh, that had been bringing up that point is, well, if there's not a session on the schedule that you uh, feel should be, that you're always free to uh, start a random session in the hallway or free or any area that's open. Because, I mean, honestly, that's been in the spirit of PodCamp since the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. And there weren't sessions like that that, that came in, honestly. I, I mean, I, I think everyone really kind of got, got on board with our theme, and the people, who, the session speakers were on board with that. So, um, you know, there were a couple we didn't go didn't go for because they were really outside of, of what the vision was. I mean, but, but there wasn't anything that was like, you know, help me learn how to use Twitter 101. So um, I, I think that even speakers who were submitting sessions were, were in tune to, to this year's kind of theme, so. Excellent. PodCampPittsburgh.com. It's free. Uh, it'll be streaming. So uh, look on there for that. If you are uh, not able to make it, you it can attend streaming. digitally. And uh, afterwards, we'll have a lot of video up after, uh, of hopefully all the sessions this year. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Always big to kind of put it out there, creative comments and all that. And uh, like I said, hit us up and you'll see us tweeting about it. Hashtag PCPGH7 this year. Uh, so PCP in with that. So I guess we should All talk. Right, so What's that? A question for you guys before we move on from, sure. uh, from PodCamp. What are your favorite PodCamp memories? Favorite PodCamp memories? Do they have to be of sessions? No, no, no. <laughs> well, let's see. So, I have a lot of videos that are kind of my fond memories that I keep reliving. Like the time that Dave went dancing on the top of the parking garage, and then I showed it at the uh, closeout uh, the next day. Um, yeah. Well, or the time was... we dressed Rex. Yeah, there was there was the time that we uh, we we took a, I think the biggest shirt we had was like a triple X, and we cut it. Yeah, out but we cut it and we put yeah. it, we taped it on Rex, and then um, uh, what pod camp was it? Four. I feel like it was four. No, no, not the Rex thing. Uh, four, I think, was uh, the one where we started. I heart Pittsburgh, or we heart Pittsburgh. With uh, oh, Chris Brogan. G- yeah. G- yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which stuff just anymore, sadly. Uh, what well, a memory was when you guys actually brought the giant YouTube to PodCamp. <laughs> that was that was Remedy. That was Red. Because he was, he was like, he had this giant drafting tube, and everybody started signing it. And then one guy was out in the hallway, says, I am the YouTube. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was fun. I actually managed to get injured. I at, think, a, at a pod camp. Yeah, place. yeah, and that's on video too. <laughs> yeah. When we were interview Chris Brogan. Yeah, and somebody like you chopped somebody. I, I and jumped hurt in. Yourself. I jumped in to chop someone, and I ended up uh, blowing my knee. One of your many in- knee injuries. <laughs> yeah, was from pod camp. So hopefully nobody gets injured at pod camp. And uh, oh, there you go. It was stupid. And yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. Um. So we have other news. We to do discuss. have other news. There was something. Something. Uh, something was supposed to happen. Today. Something about a fruit. What, what happened? Something today, about Sorg? a fruit. I was I was at work, so I didn't really get to see it. But some fruit stuff happened. Oh wait, hold on. iPads for everybody. Well, for every size, for everybody. Ta-da! Basically. Uh, so yeah, it's iPad spinning. Mini. It's real. It's here. It's, it's three hundred and thirty dollars. <laughs> Yeah. It's a lot. Um, it's um, and also iPad fours. Yeah, not that we call them iPad fours, and I understand why they didn't put a number on the last one because they were introducing this one so soon. So, how well, do you... AJ actually brought up a good point as far as 
uh, them releasing a new iPad today. Okay. Or, or announcing a new iPad today. Okay. Uh, he, he brought up the point that with uh, this announcement and the uh, the pre-orders of the iPads so soon, mm-hmm. it actually puts the iPads on schedule with all the other devices. It actually puts it before Christmas, yeah. too, because how many people wanted to buy... Like I, I mean, That's what we did. We bought our iPad once before Christmas because that's, that's just when we had money for it. And then it's like, oh, there's a new iPad coming out in like three, four months. You know? So you already feel kind of jolted by it. Um, and, and it had... Can you imagine how many more of these things are going to sell over the Christmas season because it is the brand spanking new one? Yep. Uh, it's uh, pretty much just a spec bump. It, it's, uh, uh, it has a lightning uh, mm-hmm. for the connector, so it's on par with what's going on with the iPhone 5. It's A6X. A- A6X, which is on par again with the iPhone 5. Uh, I don't know if the camera is a bump up from what the 3 was. No idea. I'm not <laughs> sure. Uh, but the iPad, but then there's the iPad mini. It's running here. I'll, I'll bring up the specs on my end here so I can get, uh, get this right. Uh, iPad mini, so it's dirty. weird because we have the iPad mini and we have the iPad. The iPad mini is running, um, it's, it's an A5 dual core. So that's, uh, that's, co- that's actually the same chip, I believe, than what's, as what's going in the iPad 2, which they're still selling for $399. There's no more iPad 3. That seems like a pretty big jump back for a hundred dollars. Yeah, to me. Um, Apple's gone low. Your mini again. Your mini is going to be a one point two mega megapixel photos for the FaceTime cam. Five megapixel on the back. Pretty much on par with the new. Uh, the new. Uh, uh, Chilla said that the front camera is bump is a bump up. It is a bump up. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, ten eighty uh, video recording. I think this is it, so. This is. Basically, except for the chip being slower, uh, being being a generation or two back, this is not a Retina display, uh, but a lot of it is on par, especially with the camera stuff, with the newer iPad. Uh, again, starting at three thirty for the Wi-Fi, uh, three twenty nine for the th- Wi-Fi uh, sixteen gigabyte version, and then it steps up from there. So, what do you think price wise, guys? Is anybody excited for this? Nope. Unnecessary. You're not. No. You're not. You have your reasons. Uh, Norm, what about you? I mean, it has, well, I've just got some questions. So it fits in your hand. So is it as big? Is it like the Samsung GX? Like, like it's, I don't understand why I would want this unless I my iPhone isn't good enough. And I've got an iPad, the new iPad, iPad three. So I couldn't imagine needing needing. A smaller version of this. It's uh, the same size as a King, Kindle Fire, the Kindle HD, the, the Samsung, the Nexus, the Nexus. It's Seven. it's the same exact size of, as all of those. So this is in line with those. This is yeah. in competition with those types types of devices. So if you're a person that says the iPad is too big for you, this is your answer. I will I will say I, after you know using the iPad, I do think that it is a little bit of an awkward shape sometimes, but that's just when I'm w- trying to walk around with it or do something weird. But I like how big it is. I like it's, it's like my little mini computer whenever I don't want to carry my MacBook Pro around. So I, I like, um, I, again, I'm still first generation, but I like carrying around because it feels like, okay, this is my notebook. You know, this is exactly. My, this I feel like notebook. a penny from uh, Inspector Gadget. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, I didn't go there. You've been hanging out with the girls, a li- the, the the tweens, a little. Too uh, much Chilla uh, br- brought up the point that AJ did say he wanted something smaller. AJ did say he wanted something smaller. So uh, a lot of people do want something that's a little easier to carry around. Because I know when I stick this in my bag, again, I have a giant case on it or whatever. It's the old version, but it does feel like I'm sticking another small laptop in my bag with me. Right. You know. Uh, with, I, with, I can see Apple doing two models, like the full size for the people who, because there are a lot of people I see with these, you know, out at coffee shops, literally like working it with a Bluetooth keyboard, and that's all they've got. I kind of am envious that that's all the technology that they need. Yeah. But at the same time, um, I couldn't see someone like that, like you know, grinding out a day in a coffee shop on something that small I don't, but um yeah this is probably for the, the that market the fire market yeah yeah I, I don't think this is going to be anybody's workhorse i don't think this is going to be anybody's uh this is what i'm going to take on the plane ride with me and that's it uh kind of situation uh what how big's the surface the surface is a 10 inch isn't it and they yeah. and they seem to be that that is being positioned as a bit of the workhorse because of the keyboard situation we talked about at length last week and everything <laughs> um it really I, 
there's definitely people that want this smaller size. Um, is $130, when compared to something like the Nexus 7 or the Amazon Kindle, enough to be a part of the ecosystem? Now, Chachi, you had a different perspective of, of this coming from where you're at. Of course, you're an Android user to begin with. Yeah. Now, what, But I, I did say last week in the, the iPad mini uh, mm -hmm. discussion that at the right price point, I would seriously take a look at that. You've iPad been looking mini. for a reason to come over Apple. Well, I mean, I. Well, well price point. You've yeah. been looking for a reason. Right, price point. I, and uh, Apple failed to do that. At, at $330, uh, and my, my main argument with this is I can go out and I can get a, a Fire HD or even better, a Nexus 7 for $200. Mm -hmm. And with that. I don't have to go out and rebuy all of the movies and all of the music and all of the apps that I've already paid for on the uh, on the Android or Google Play market. So I mean it, that's nothing that I have to uh, go and rebuy. So I mean if you take a look at it, three hundred thirty dollars for an iPad Mini, and then repurchasing everything I've already bought just so I can do what I want to do with it but is this, ridiculous. this is kind of the same issue I have when I'm looking at, like, say, a Nexus 7 or a Kindle Fire for my option for the for the 7-inch, though. Um, so, but again, it's a lot cheaper, so that's a lot easier to swallow. Right. So, I mean, really, you got to think, almost to the point, is $130, like, if I just if I just put that towards, uh, towards the apps that I need to replace... Uh, you know, does that make out in, in the end? I, I think people that want the iPad and want it at a lower price point, like, th I think most people are going to say, okay, this is a cheaper chance for me to get into an iPad, not to get myself a t notebook, or I'm sorry, a tablet. This is my chance to get into the iPad without paying $400, $500. Right. And really, I would say pick this over an iPad too. You get a better camera, specs... Uh, seem about the same as far as your processor. Uh, I don't know what they did to the memory, so maybe it's a little faster because of that. Um, I, I think I, I would I would pick a 16 gigabyte one of these Mac Minis over that iPad 2. iPad 2 is like how many years old? Right. And considering they just lopped this thing off, uh, the iPad 1 from their updates, iPad 2 is the next to go, and I'm sure it'll happen next summer or next uh, uh, fall when they update it. So that thing's that thing's days are already numbered. So, I don't know. Uh, also, along with that, uh, with the iPad... Uh, oh, wait, first from the chat room. Uh, Chill's in there. He says, I could see maybe salespeople just showing people stuff with graphics out, VGA or HDMI or AirPlay. I actually had... Uh, we would, I talked... I mentioned last week on one of the shows, we talked with somebody from a local uh, television affiliate, and he was actually showing us some of the stuff on his... Uh, he actually had a, a Zoom like uh that chill is brought on the show mm -hmm. and uh surprise something didn't work <laughs> because the video didn't come up uh i i don't know what he was on i don't know if he had cellular cellular on there and we were in the middle of nowhere or what the issue was uh but still yeah that's exactly this is a marketing guy and he's, he's going out showing stuff off and isn't it easier if they just have something a little smaller to show up they just need that seven inch screen you know it makes sense at that point mm -hmm. so uh, also, big spec bumps with uh, their Mac, Mac, MacBook Pro, iMac, Mac Mini. Uh, we got a 13-inch Retina MacBook Ta -da! Pro. It's sexy. There it is. You, you have no CD-ROM drive. Mm -hmm. What does it start at? I didn't see what this one starts uh, at. $1,200. $1,200? No, wait, that's a regular one, isn't it? The Retina Display one starts at seventeen hundred. Oh, so a tiny bit more affordable if you want that Pro Air kind of thing going on. Uh, which I'll be honest, if I upgraded my laptop, I'll probably have to just go ahead with the Retina at this point. It seems to make sense. I actually, I think by the time I buy a new laptop, that's going to be the option. I don't think I don't think your old MacBook Pros are going to be around much longer. Like I think they're just going to be phased out within the next year. Right. So. Um, you can always grab an external hard uh, CD drive if you still need it, like I do for some works. Because I still author DVDs. We we have a whole store of DVDs. No, oh. I know, right? <laughs> on Who's on, on this very site uh, for Sogatron Media. What? Who's buying DVDs? A lot of people are buying DVDs, especially wrestling fans. Um, 
so again, that's that's basically I think the same thing. Uh, uh, IMAX, IMAX are pretty. By our DVDs. Have you got the IMAX up there? No, not yet. Super thin against it. the. Uh, I, I this really feels like the MacBook Air of uh, IMAX. Took away the optical again, just like everything else. Uh, super thin. Uh, it's well, it's it's it comes to a thin edge. There's a big bulge in the middle uh, for this thing. That's where they jammed everything. That's where they jammed everything exactly. Um, it's nice. It's sexy. It, it makes me consider putting out putting up for a. Uh, it makes you. It makes you consider putting out for Apple. It makes me want. Yeah, it kind of makes me want to put out for Apple. See? It still starts at about uh, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars for these things. <laughs> So, I mean, that's that's relatively affordable considering how nice of a screen you get with that thing. Look at that. That's sexy. What do you think of that, Norm? Yeah, it looks awesome. Like, you would just hang it on your wall. <laughs> uh, also... Yeah, we, I, if, I needed a computer, if I needed a computer like that, I definitely think it would be awesome to have. Yeah, yeah. You're never upgrading anything on this thing, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> finally, a spec bump the Mac Mini. Three months after I finally bought one. Oh, no. Uh, Isn't updates. that how it always works, though? Oh, what's that? Isn't that it always is works? always how it works. Of course, everything is updated. Everything I mentioned already is updated with Thunderbolt and USB 3. So if you're a video guy like me that's been wondering about using that high-end stuff, not that I can afford the high-end stuff, but it's nice to be kind of future-proofed, uh, they are all updated with it. I think thunderbolt no i don't think thunderbolt was on it might have been on the original one i have like basically your display port's the same thing Mac as the thunderbolt Mini. uh but i don't know if it's like needs to be activated that way or not uh so really i you can get uh, again it's the new um i don't know how this is i, I think it's the newer uh uh, uh Bam! Chipset or whatever to speed it up oh, no, a little it bit. Changed on me. I wrote, oh, there. oh, it's a Mac <laughs> Mini. It hasn't changed in like three <laughs> years visually. It's just the specs on the inside. Oh, this is the other thing I heard about. It's just a really a small box. <sighs> All right, Sorry. I got two issues here. Okay. One, because the one I just purchased does not. I actually had the option to go with Nvidia or maybe it's ATI graphics. This one only has Intel HD graphics 4000 as an option. That kind of hurts. I, I never go with Intel. Like as far as a video being a video professional kind of thing, I kind of have a problem with the Intel graphics. Um, so I definitely bumped up the AMD. What? I, 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 you have your Mac Mini sitting here, <laughs> and I keep putting my hand on it. Yeah. And it kind of looks like I'm, I'm putting my hand on a Bible. <laughs> bring, like <in> <laughs> how small it is, right? Like, Clearly. I, you know what I do with my Mac? I keep forgetting this down here. You know what I do every Tuesday. Since I, I have an older laptop, I want this thing out of here so this video uh, captures correctly. I grab my Mac Mini from my desk out of my office upstairs, bring it down here, plug it in, and we do the show on it. Yes. This is what we're broadcasting it's with. This here. is what yeah. we're capturing with. You're going to show it off? Yeah, yeah I'll show You're going to show it off? You're not on. You're not on me. I know. Yeah, I mean, you're, no, you're on me. There you go. I there there to... it is, right there. There it is. I wanted to grab the camera and move it before. This is the I main put... processor going yeah. on here. Look, Mac Mini, there's my hand. <laughs> <laughs> These things are great, though. If you just need, like, like in so many cases, this is this is what you need. Like in a weird angle of sword. This is kind of fun. This is kind. Of... <laughs> Um, I think that's about it for the Apple stuff. Is it? <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop before I give them some um, sickness. <laughs> still, still not updated is the Mac Pro. So, good <laughs> Bobby luck. called it the ECW fan cam. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, if you're on know. a Mac Pro and you're a video guy that that, that loves those things, there, and I really think performance wise, you're not. You're not even winning when you go Mac Pro these days. Hey, hmm. you know what also happened during the uh, the Apple presentation? What happened during the Apple presentation? Zanga <laughs> laid off over 100 employees. Damn. While the presentation was going on. Because, well, the Zanga is kind of smart sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. And when it came to not getting media attention, they knew if they did something during the app, the uh, the Apple presentation, no one would know. Bobby says, Zynga, please. Uh, it was, uh, to be more specific, they laid off people from the Austin office mm. and a couple of the East Coast offices. Um, everyone that was involved with uh, Zynga's The Ville game, 
or uh, bingo were laid off. So Wow, that's pretty crazy. Well, I mean, uh, they're actually in the process of getting sued <laughs> over their bingo game. Over their bingo game? Yeah, they stole it from another company that's not EA. Jeez. <laughs> So, I mean, it, it makes sense. <laughs> that happened, and Apple stock price fell off a cliff, says Chilla. Huh. I don't know how much they dropped, but that's oh, well. usually... I, but I, guess that's, I guess that's pretty standard that they... People are upset over the from Mini. What, well, from what? They're upset about what? The Mini. The Mini? Yeah. Really? That's what they're upset about? I don't know. Uh, like 20-something, uh, like 20 something, he says. Uh, yeah, well, the guy kept hearing, you know, you sell on the room, or you buy on the room, or you sell on the on the, on the the announcement. So whatever that means, I don't I don't understand stocks at all. So, so yeah. Uh, you know, and one of the things with this, you know, one of the biggest discussion going into this announcement, and I don't know, I, I hopefully I'll have a chance to watch the keynote here in the next couple of days. Which, uh, pay, oh, this is the other weird thing. This the keynote I saw was going to be live on Apple TVs, and they had it posted on the site immediately afterwards with the rest of the updates. Hmm. I've never seen them turn around that quick, and, and they had a stream. Granted, not as many people were able to stream it because you have to have an Apple TV, right? So that's how they kind of kept that down because I don't think they could. I don't think anybody could do the, that capacity for how many people try to watch this thing. Um, and that's all I had about that. Before right. I went, oh, it, well, we looking at this thing. A lot of discussion was about this new seven inch was going to be a big play for the educational market. Of course, there's that big discussion about digital uh, textbooks and everything. Uh, so I wonder, I'm sure they put it over. I mean, there's a thing that says for uh, at the bottom of the Apple page, I don't have it up again, but there's like a for education and for uh, work kind of thing. Um, but really, Amazon, Amazon's also definitely making a play for the educational uh, market here. Uh, I don't know if you got the story up there, Chach. Uh, according to over on Mash Mashable, uh, Amazon Whispercast helps teachers manage students' ebooks. So this is pretty cool tool that they're leaving out there for uh, the schools to install. <laughs> so if you have Kindle, it it'll manage what books you release out to your students. I, I, that's th that's really nice to see. Um, Especially considering you can pick up a Kindle for like $70 yeah. in comparison to starting at $330. Uh, granted, you're not getting the best experience probably, but you at least have a textbook at that point. But then how many other devices? Everything has a Kindle app and you can Everything. use this whisper cast. You could be some, you know, you know, rich kid that has the uh, $500 iPad. You had the same textbook as the kid that just eked by and was given the uh, sixty-nine dollar version, or or an, uh, you know a Kindle Fire, or they have any of the Android devices and you have the Kindle thing. I I, I really think like the Apple thing's nice. I think your rich schools are going to do it that have the money to put into something like that to invest in something like that. But I really think that your general population, we get to the point where every school has something like this. Every school is going to have something like a Kindle that's that cheap and just works across the board. Norm, what do you think? Agreed. I think it's the year 2012 and about time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. You no, know, it's, it's going to be interesting. Now, are we going to see, um, I wonder if this is going to make, you know, a, a gap in education or it's going to be interesting how education really responds to this, uh, um, you know, or through this type of learning, you know, or, um, you know, obviously the textbooks that the schools have to pay, pay, buy and, you know, pay for are really expensive, but this could make you know, content delivery and updates of content, you know, cheaper, theoretically, but, you know, we'll see how, how you know, how schools can adopt to it. Yeah, and and not to say that Apple doesn't have a little. I mean, Apple's done the the education market before. I mean, I remember you know I grew up you know through school playing Oregon Trail and Math Blasters on the uh, Apple IIEs around class. Number muncher, M number munchers. I mean, who did? Is there anybody that didn't have an Apple IIE somewhere along their class there of our generation? No, nope. really. I mean, we had them till like '96. Um, I don't know when. When did your school upgrade? You're a little bit. Oh, I'm sure there are some schools better so than. Well, I don't know. Before that, yeah. you're you're a better to do school than I went to. Uh, that's why I went to your school. Right. So, um, 
I mean, I, I, I think there's an option for that, but I really think a lot of the general population, that lock-in that you have with going with something like an iBooks or iPads, I, I think that's going to just, yeah, you're, you're going to have another kind of class issue. You know, oh, my school had had Kindles, had like black and white Kindles. And, well, we had we had the iPads, you know, you can tell where the rich schools were, because I, I, like I said, eventually, I think these are going to be rolled out everywhere except for the inner cities. Well, yeah, kids can't carry book bags anymore. You don't have to anymore. I mean, I mean, well, they're not allowed to. They're not allowed to. Well, I mean, there's a lot of schools where if you want to carry a book bag, it has to be clear plastic. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I mean, they have to go. So through. that takes care of that situation. Right. And 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 well, this is another great one. And I heard instead, on all these kids are getting mugged for their Kindles and iPads. I was going to say that was the other thing. That was the other thing, though. There was like now you have another like style war. You know, where, you know, kids are getting, like, beat up or whatever over the clothes they wear and stuff like that. Now it's, like, for, your you know, Jimmy, little Jimmy's walking home with a $500 iPad, you know, versus let's just give him a little $60 uh, yeah. Kindle. You know, he's a lot safer on the streets with a $60 <laughs> Kindle because who really wants that? Let's be honest, you know. Well, I wonder what this That's, is going to – what that could do to, like, the one lap top for child type programs, you know, where you, you yeah. are trying to get, like, cheap technology into the – hands of kids as early as possible so one kindle per child one kindle yeah so i mean because anyway you think about it, who's, who's no they're cheap enough you can I'm, do two i'm still back on the other one Who, two for kids has anybody gotten beaten up has everybody anybody ever gotten mugged for a kindle I'm oh sure, i'm sure i'm sure when they first came out someone when they first got, came out when they were like 300 dollars. yeah i'm pretty sure someone know. got beat for their kindle it's not the style thing we're like you know, I, I, when somebody sees a tablet, like I don't think they say, "Oh, that's money." They see the Apple logo, they say, "Oh, that's money." Yeah. In in the long run. So, all right. Uh, one last story, and we'll head out of here. Subsidize, subsidize, subs, shit. Subsidize Xbox's subsidize. return. Um, it's been expanded a bit. We talked about this a few months ago. Um, you know, nine. It was like a hundred dollars, and was it a hundred dollars before something like that? It's for you to get the Xbox, but yeah. you had to commit to like two years of Xbox Live, something like that. Yeah. Uh, well, they've they've expanded it for whoop ninety nine dollars. You you either have a choice of the four gigabyte version with a connect, a two hundred fifty gigabyte version without a connect. Or for $149, you get both the 250 gigabytes and a Kinect. Yes. Uh, again, uh, they, uh, they're they offering them for these prices up front, and the, but you have to sign up for Xbox Live Gold for two years commitment at $14.99 per month. And, uh, well, at least they're expanding it a bit. Uh, well, the pilot waiting. program we talked about before is at the 16 uh, official Microsoft stores. The company has not confirmed that's changing, according to this article here on The Verge. Uh, but there's a holding page that, uh, let's check this out, that says, check back later to see a full list of participating retailers. So this I could see this dropping into, like, Walmarts across the country in the long run. It could. I mean, it, it seems to make sense there. It seems like that's... Xbox 360 games will be on a rise, though. What do you mean on the rise? Like at uh, places like GameStop or The Exchange or you know, because resellers. all these people bought into this because it's a cheaper thing. So there's going to be more games where they're cycling through because yeah. they're obviously going for the cheaper option, the more yeah. thrifty options. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, it's really interesting. This is a really interesting way to make this the kind of standard in video games by making it more accessible to people so it makes a lot of sense i mean how much would would a unit cost individually now um anywhere from 200 to 300 dollars yeah it would be see, more that's not, see that's not that much to me i feel like if i were gonna get a subsidized device i mean like iphone 600 bucks you know and you yeah pay, but it's you know, you know just like the phones you know it, it, and even like t-mobile offers t-mobile offers um um you know, like unlock stuff and say, hey, this is cheaper in the long run. A lot of people see that initial price tag. I people, know. I, I totally people, get, get I mean, it, it's not. No, but, it's not. But, it's not sound to do it that way. But really, that it, they see the $99. So like, what? I can get that for $99. I can do all that stuff and play, you know, Call of Duty and all that other stuff for, for $99. They don't really like, oh, I can I can afford $15 a month whatever you know and then realize yeah. how much they really shelled out in the long run 
you know, versus just dropping the two hundred dollars, two three hundred dollars, buying that discounted card at Amazon or Walmart uh, for for a year or two of subscription, and you know, come on. Yeah. So my problem with the the current consoles is I have a PlayStation, and it's just a piece of crap hardware, and you know, I'm really really disappointed with it, and. Um, you know, the games are fine and everything. We play Skyrim, but it, it's so slow and the graphics aren't that great. And if I'm going to bit kind of subsidize program, I'm going to want a, a piece of hardware that's actually going to run, you know, mm-hmm. um, but put some real components in there or something. Xbox. <coughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. On that point, thanks again, Norm, for joining us. PodcampPittsburgh.com is where all the information is on this weekend's event. That's right. Yeah. We're going to have a sweet time. Go there and register. If you want to contribute to uh, our community blog, you can register with the site and submit a blog post. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, October 27th and 28th, we'll be at Point Park University and uh, pod camping. Pod camp. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Norm Chachi. He's at insert coin to begin dot com. That's you. Whoa. At Chachi says. Yep. Oh, where, right what was your goal? What was uh, your goal? One completely ridiculous tweet per day. At least. At least. His promise to you, America. You may not be able to depend on these politicians that are just tearing each other apart. Oh, come apart. on. I, uh, last week, I campaigned from the perspective of Bowser from Mario Brothers. That was amazing. So I mean, it, you you're gonna get ridiculousness. I tried to start basis. a campaign uh, for CM Punk, but they didn't go nowhere. No, no, I'm not committed. Right, definitely not committed. No, no. Uh, and of course, uh, my stuff's over at uh, Sorgatron.com for my blog, Mike uh, uh, SorgatronMedia.com. But if you want to get at me and all the social medias, MikeSorg.com is where you can find all the Twitters, all Facebooks, all that kind of stuff. Media. At Sorgatron on Twitter, all that, all that, all that, including my recent. Misadventures in teaching. That's been fun. Uh, so with that, thanks again. Are you going to do what we wanted you to do? No. Okay. Okay. They want me. I, I don't even know if I should even say it on here. Why? Uh, they want me to. They, as in the Internet, as in all Twitters, want me to, when I give my first quiz, jump jump on the desk. Yes. You wanted me to throw the test at them. Well, yeah, you I'm don't. Not gonna you do don't that. have to throw the test at them. That I'm, was I'm just... really kind of curious if I do, I get fired just for jumping on the desk and yelling. Um, All and... right, fine. You don't even have to. You don't even have to jump on the desk. Okay. We can take that away too. Okay. Uh, uh, the ultimate goal. Maybe I'll stand to, on a chair. I mean, the ultimate goal is to get you to stand in front of your class of nerds and tell uh, say, "All right, we're we're having a quiz or a test today. None shall pass." That's all we really want you to With do. With the dramatic pause. Right. None shall pass! Yes. That's what we want from you. Is that, is that how you want as, it to come As off? a teacher, we want you to do that. The puppy has escaped and joined us down here in the studio, so I'm going to go uh, see why he's down here. Yeah. And meanwhile, you can uh, you can get to us at contact.awesomecast.com for all your emails and informations and stuff. We are at live.sorgatronmedia every Tuesday night at 7 p.m., Right. And you can talk to See us right on there. Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus. So we are everywhere. Twitter is at AwesomeCast. Uh, I believe we're nominated on Stitcher. No, we weren't. No, we tried. Oh, we tried. We're not on there. Okay. Uh, so that 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 mission. There's a lot of other fine podcasts on there. You should go vote for though. But um, go look up the Stitcher Awards. Yeah, I should so, take that off that button off the site. Yeah, I saw it. That's why I brought yeah. it up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, t- we join the conversation over at Facebook, Google Plus. If you like us, subscribe to us on iTunes, leave a message, and we will uh, talk to you. Thanks, guys. This is uh, uh, for me, the guys, and Wicked here saying thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. He's snowing on your head. I know. I know.